Roughly a month ago, I checked out the Death Adder V3 Pro gaming mouse from Razer. Well, today we're revisiting the Razer mouse lineup to look at another one of the mice on offer from the gaming giants. This is the Basilisk V3 Pro. I wonder if it's any good. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. As I mentioned in the intro to the video just now, today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and my full review on the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro Gaming Mouse. Now Razer described this as their most advanced gaming mouse yet and that is backed up by offering a boatload of features such as up to 30,000 DPI, multiple connectivity options including Razer's hyperspeed wireless, 750 IPS speed and 70G acceleration capabilities, stock PTFE feet, a four-way hyperscroll tilt wheel, and it's compatible with their new Razer Mouse Dock Pro and wireless charging puck. The list goes on and on. But with a recommended retail price of £159.99, it's not a cheap mouse by any means. I was very impressed when I reviewed the Defada V3 Pro, so this mouse has a lot to live up to. Let's go over everything and see just how advanced this thing is. As is the usual, I'll start by showing you a quick unboxing and talking about the design of the mouse overall. The box is standard issue Razer stuff, branded with their recognisable black and green colour scheme. There's a picture of the mouse on the front and then some details on the features of the Basilisk on the back of the box. In the box you'll of course find the mouse itself along with a 1.9 meter USB type A to C cable for charging, although you can use the Razer Mouse Dock Pro for both charging and connectivity if you use the wireless charging puck as well, I'll go over that in more detail later in the video. You also get a USB A to C converter, the hyperspeed wireless dongle for connecting wirelessly if you choose not to go down the route of the, getting the Mouse Dock Pro. Uh, you, you can find that dongle tucked away in the bottom of the mouse. And then there's finally an instruction manual. The design of the white model Basilisk V3 Pro that I have here straight up reminds me of a Stormtrooper. The black accents really add some contrast to the look, but beware, the white finish does pick up marks very, very easily. It's quite easy to clean, but it does pick up a few marks here and there. The left click, right click and main body of the mouse are finished in a slightly textured plastic while the black accents are shiny, again adding to the contrast between the designs. The mouse looks really great in my opinion. The left and right sides are much grippier than the rest of the mouse and are coated in a textured rubber finish. The Basilisk V3 Pro has a very ergonomic design. The left hand side of the mouse has a very nice feeling contoured section that allows your thumb to just like nestle in place. It's very comfortable to use and it feels just right when you're holding it. Contrast in design, which I mentioned quite a lot in my videos, but contrast in design is front and center again, quite literally. With the left and right click buttons having a sharp and aggressive design on the front of them, much unlike the curves found at the rear of the mouse. The Basilisk V3 Pro looks very, very good in my opinion. It's probably one of my favorite looking peripherals ever, to be honest, and that's backed up by the RGB. The wheel, logo, and base of the Basilisk all have customizable RGB zones that can be tweaked within Razer's Synapse software. The lighting effects are very smooth and fluid, and they look great. There are a fair few buttons to be found in this mouse. There's obviously the usual left and right click, which are totally independent pieces of plastic from the rest of the mouse's body. Uh, the back and forward or the side buttons are nice and chunky, and it's really hard to miss them when you reach for them while you're gaming. Then there are a few extras. There's a sensitivity clutch button positioned just in front of those side buttons. Now this is basically a button that lowers the DPI of the mouse when it's pressed down. It's great for hitting crispy headshots while sniping. And then sitting just behind the scroll wheel are two small black buttons. One for changing the scroll mode of the scroll wheel and then one for cycling through different assigned DPI stages which you can set up both of those things in Synapse which we'll look at later on.
Flipping the mouse upside down, you'll find buttons for switching profiles and a rocker switch for changing between the different connection modes. You may have noticed that I haven't spoken about the scroll wheel in depth yet. That's because it's great. It's so great that I gave it its own section in the video. More on that scroll wheel in a little bit. The Basilisk V3 Pro is by no means a lightweight mouse. In its standard configuration, without adding that wireless charging puck that I mentioned earlier, it tips the scales at roughly 112 grams. That's without the cable. Add on a couple of grams if you choose to add that wireless charging puck from the Mouse Dock Pro bundle, which again, I'll talk about the puck and the Mouse Dock Pro in the connectivity and battery life section of the video in a few minutes. Now I want to talk about build quality, and for a mouse that costs 160 quid, the build quality has got to be pretty much flawless. And I've got to say, the Basilisk V3 Pro doesn't disappoint in this regard. Everything feels solid and sturdy. There are no creaks or rattles at all on anything on the review unit that I've got. The wheel does move a slight bit, but that's due to it being a hypertilt wheel that has programmable inputs on three different axes, left, right, and then clicking it down. Every single button on the Basilisk V3 Pro feels well made and quite satisfying to click down. There isn't any flex to the body of the mouse when I unrealistically squeeze it to within an inch of its life, which is something that would never happen in any real life situation, but I thought I'd abuse the mouse for you guys a little bit anyway. Now let's talk in more detail about the scroll wheel that I mentioned a moment ago. It's one of the best I've ever used. Only one of. The best is yet to come, so subscribe to the channel to keep up with our uploads and all will be revealed in one of my reviews soon. But back to the Basilisk, this scroll wheel is on another level to mice that I've tried in the past. It has an adjustable scroll action, which can either be changed on the mouse itself by using the scroll wheel adjustment button that I mentioned earlier, or by setting it up in Razer's Synapse software. You can hear the scroll wheel adjusting when you change the setting, like a clutch is adjusting inside to change how fast or how smooth it slows. It can automatically speed up when you scroll faster, automatically switch to free spinning mode from tactile mode when you quickly flick the scroll wheel. It's absolutely genius. It's a feature that I never gave two thoughts about until I actually used it. Browsing the internet, especially Reddit and websites like that, with the smart scroll setting turned on, is so much better than using a standard scroll wheel. The wheel can be clicked left and right as well as clicked down too. By default, this will just scroll left and right, which is a really nice feature for creative work like the likes of Photoshop, but you can also remap that function to a wide range of actions within Synapse. And in summary, this scroll wheel is very, very good. In the time I've been testing the Basilisk V3 Pro, it's improved my productivity. And the first time I changed the scroll wheel setting, I geeked out a little bit when I heard that clutch change. Here's a quick sound test so you can hear all the buttons and that scroll wheel in action. The Basilisk V3 Pro uses the same Focus Pro 30K optical sensor as found in the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Naga V2 Pro. This is capable of up to 30,000 DPI with different stages being able to be set within Synapse and then cycled through with the button on top of the mouse. Here's some shots of the internals of the mouse including some foam that they've placed on top of the battery. Everything looks really good quality and I was pleased to see that when I cracked this thing open. If you choose to use the Basilisk V3 Pro wirelessly as it comes out of the box with the standard dongle that comes with the mouse, then it has a polling rate of 1000 Hz, which is pretty much the norm for wireless peripherals nowadays. But you can increase this polling rate and in turn decrease latency in two different ways. The first is you can opt to purchase the 4000 Hz hyperpolling dongle for 30 quid directly from Razer's website, or you can go down the route of purchasing a Mouse Dock Pro, which will again increase the polling rate to 4000 Hz and offer wireless charging via this magnetic dock. As it is though, the polling rate of 1000 Hz is definitely no slouch. The Basilisk has handled all the gaming I've thrown at it with ease and it's felt constantly smooth and fluid. 
Now, talking about the Mouse Dock Pro, Riser sent me out a Mouse Dock Pro along with the Basilisk V3 Pro. And if you're about convenience like me, then I think you'll feel the same as I do if you used one of these. I love this dock, but I don't love the price of the combined package. It's an, it's an additional purchase to the mouse and it retails for 80 quid. Taking the cost for both the mouse and the dock up to an eye water in 240 quid. That's quite the price for a mouse and a way to charge and connect it. Where does this end? How much is too much for a company to charge? But like I said, if you're after convenience and you don't mind paying for it, then this is what you want to go with this mouse. The dock is a small black wedge shaped device with RGB surrounding its bottom edge. And it offers two main features. The ability to connect the mouse with a 4000 Hz polling rate. And then you can magnetically attach the mouse to the dock to charge it up wirelessly. No wires, no fuss, no hassle. I've been sticking the mouse on the dock each night when I turn off my PC and it's fully charged each morning and ready to go. It's really simple and very convenient. The charging happens via the wireless charging puck that replaces the standard plastic cover on the bottom of the Basilisk V3 Pro. This puck is included with the Mouse Dock Pro, but it can also be purchased separately for 20 quid and will add Qi wireless charging with any Qi compatible wireless charger, not just with the Mouse Dock Pro, to this mouse along with the Naga V2 Pro. The only difference being that the Naga will not pole at 4000 Hz when connected to the Mouse Dock Pro and will only charge wirelessly. I and mean, I've got a full review coming of that mouse soon, so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Of course, you don't have to use any of these additional products. Everything is included in the box to connect wirelessly using the included hyperspeed wireless dongle. And the mouse also has Bluetooth if you need it. The battery life listed on Razer's spec sheet for the Basilisk V3 Pro is up to 90 hours when you use hyperspeed wireless. That's a huge claim. It's the same as the Death Adder V3 Pro that I reviewed a while back. And this mouse delivers just as well in terms of battery as the Death Adder did. But, and this is a big but, if you connect to the Mouse Dock Pro or to the Hyper Polling Dongle and turn the polling rate of the mouse up to 4000 Hz, then the battery life takes quite a big hit. I'm averaging about 20 hours between charges when running it like that, with the battery life soaring up closer to that claimed 90 hours when you drop the polling rate down to the standard or the more standard 1000 Hertz. But then again, if you've got the dock on your desk, then it'll last all day and it'll be back at 100% by the next day, so it's not a massive issue. Just don't forget to stick it on the dock like I have a couple of times, so you'll wake up in the morning and your mouse will be out of battery. So let's talk about gaming. This is a gaming mouse after all, and I've got to say, it's been a bit of a welcome change moving back to a heavier mouse after using ultralight mice for so long. I feel like I can be more precise with this mouse while gaming than with something that hardly weighs anything. It's got a heft to it that just helps me keep it under control when I'm aiming. I play a lot of shooters, so when I'm aiming, it just feels more sturdy. My almost middle-aged reaction times have suited it quite well. I've been playing a mixture of games like the usual Call of Duty and Battlefield, along with some Civ 6 and Diablo 3, and the Basilisk V3 Pro has been a joy to use through all of them. The PTFE feet glide pretty nicely. It's not as fast as an ultralight mouse like the G Pro Wireless or the Death Adder V3 Pro, but it still feels nice and smooth on the mouse pad. The software that accompanies the Basilisk V3 Pro is, like every other Razer product, Synapse. It's where you're going to go to configure the mouse exactly how you want it. Overall, the software is decent. It's relatively simple to use. It has an okay user interface design, but can sometimes be a bit clunky when updating both it and the firmware of any connected devices. It's more specifically regarding the Basilisk V3 Pro, you'll find tabs labeled Customize, Performance, Lighting, Calibration, and Power. The Customize tab is where you're gonna to go to change any of the button mappings and reprogram any of the buttons except for the left click. Performance is the place for changing both the DPI stages and the polling rate. Lighting is pretty self-explanatory. 
RGB lives in here. There are a few default settings, and if you want to go more in depth, you can install the Chroma Studio add-on and then get really creative with different layers and stuff like that. Calibration allows you to set the tracking, lift off and landing distances with asymmetric cutoff, letting these two settings be independent of one another, just like on the Death Adder V3 Pro. And finally, the power tab gives you some control over the wireless power saving and low power mode options. Basically, it's when the mouse will turn off after it hasn't been used for X amount of minutes and at what battery level to activate power saving mode, which strangely isn't available when you have a polling rate of 2000 Hz or higher selected. Now I've covered the Synapse software in a couple of reviews here on the KitGear channel now, and not much has changed since I first spoke about it. It gets the job done, and it's okay. It can sometimes be a bit temperamental and clunky, and there are definitely better and worse pieces of peripheral companion software out there. So in conclusion, this mouse is great, but it's so expensive. When you factor in the cost of the dock as well, which is how I've mostly been using it, then it's just expensive. That's just, I can't say anything else. £240 for the complete setup. That definitely whacks it firmly in the enthusiast category. But if we put the price to one side for a moment, it's a very solid mouse, which I've enjoyed using. I've really enjoyed using, to be honest. It's well made, it's comfortable, it's smooth, it's fast, and I think it looks really nice. The build quality is excellent, and the convenience of having the Mouse Dock Pro alongside it is bliss. No faffing around with grabbing the cable when the battery runs out will never get old, I don't think. Just being able to whack it on that dock is just, I won't be able to go back to using another mouse, it's gonna to be tough. If you spend a lot of time, money, and effort keeping your setup looking as clean as possible, then this mouse fits the bill, albeit a really, really expensive bill. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Let us know in the comments what you think of this setup. I've really enjoyed using it, but it is, I can't get around how expensive it is. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. You'll find links in the video's description to our Discord server, our merch store, and our Patreon if you want to go and visit any of those. Um, anyway, I've been Matt. This has been the Basilisk V3 Pro and the Mouse Dock Pro. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.